With Sony's legacy consoles continuing to age, and now Sony clearly itching to put their legacy platforms out to pasture, we here at Gaming Bolt are going to do our part in making sure that some of PlayStation's better games are not lost to time. While we are glad that Sony has reversed their decision to shut down PSN for the Vita for now, it's still a good idea to be familiar with some of the better games for each platform to prepare for when they do eventually flip that switch. Before we go ahead, please consider subscribing to our channel. We upload new videos every single day, and your support really helps us out. With that out of the way, let's start. 1. Persona 4 Golden To put it quite simply, everything that Persona 3 got right, Persona 4 Golden gets even more right. Exploring the randomly generated dungeons with your party has never been more engaging than it was in Persona 4. In fact, many Persona fans got the Vita for this specific game and ended up liking the system for its other excellent titles. The characters in Persona 4 are quite a bit different than they were in 3, as they are in 5, but that really just serves to make 4 even more of its own journey, which is absolutely worth taking if you're a fan of the series. 2. Killzone Mercenary This list isn't ranked, but if it was, Killzone Mercenary would be at or near the top of it. This is one of Sony Cambridge's last games before Sony shut them down, and it shows with how much of a command they had over the necessary skills needed for AAA development. Killzone Mercenary could easily be mistaken for the second or third game on the PS3 with how good it looks, but it does much more than just mimic those games. It has a lot of its own systems and mechanics that make it very much its own thing, and I would argue one of the better games in the series. It's unfortunate how few first-person shooters ended up coming out on the Vita to take advantage of those two analog sticks, but of those that did, Killzone Mercenary is arguably the best. The story takes place in a similar era to the second and third games, but wisely steps outside of the events of those games and focuses on mercenaries that are mostly just profiting off of the conflict between the Hellgast and the ISA instead of having a real dog in the fight. This opens up a lot of opportunities for the story to exist in its own world without stepping on the toes of any of the other games, and that's exactly what you want in a spin-off like this. It also works on the PlayStation TV or Vita TV with a DualShock 3, which is how a lot of people prefer to play it, but either way, this is a game you should definitely own in your Vita library. 3. Uncharted Golden Abyss much like Killzone Mercenary, you could easily mistake Uncharted Golden Abyss for one of the mainline games. It has a lot of the climbing and platforming and action that you would expect from Uncharted 2, 3, and has a few Vita-centric minigames thrown in, which are surprisingly fun most of the time. Sony Bend still doesn't get enough credit for this game, and while that is a shame, it's still absolutely worth a buy if you're even remotely a fan of the series, or just looking for a good action-adventure game to play on your Vita. 4. Miramasa The Demon Blade While most will think of Dragon's Crown when they talk about Vanillaware, and that's completely understandable, one of their lesser-known games is Muramasa. It's a game that you really won't have another way to play unless you own a Wii or Wii U. But even still, I would say the Vita is the better way to own this game given its pick-up-and-play nature, and the fact that you can really start and stop the game at any point. It's a very straightforward action game with a lot of stylish visuals and fun, easy-to-learn combat. It certainly gets harder as it goes along, but I would say it's exactly the type of action game you can put down and pick back up after a week and fall right back into it without having to relearn a bunch of stuff. Number 5. Freedom Wars One of Vita's last-ditch efforts at an outstanding action game that would break the handheld out of the obscure and into the mainstream was Freedom Wars. Unfortunately, it did fall short of that lofty goal, but the game is still a good time. It features a lot of Monster Hunter-like gameplay that puts enough of its own spin on everything to make it feel like its own experience. The plot has an interesting premise where prisoners can take on dangerous, laborious battles with monsters on behalf of the state to regain their freedom. And it's rather interesting for this type of game, but the real star of the show here is the gameplay itself. Weapons range from guns to swords to hammers, and it's all fun to use. 6. Severed Severed is a game by Drinkbox Studios, who are and will probably always be better known for the Guacamelee games, but this one was an interesting diversion for them that also wound up on the Wii and the 3DS and the Vita. To put it simply, it's kind of an old-school first-person dungeon crawler, but with that Drinkbox Studios look and a very accessible combat system that basically just requires a series of swipes. 
certainly didn't reinvent the wheel, but it's an interesting game nonetheless, and absolutely worth your time if you're interested in something rather unique on the Vita. 7. Tales of Hearts R The Tales series has been all over the place over the last 10 years or so, and Tales of Hearts R on the Vita is one of the finer games in the series if you ask me. On the surface, it's a very predictable Japanese-style role-playing game with an overworld to explore and battle arenas to fight enemies in and level up your character. The basic setup is something you've definitely seen before, but I would argue the story is one of the finer JRPG stories you're ever going to find. And fans of the genre should absolutely give this game a shot if they haven't already. 8. Sly Cooper Thieves in Time Sly Cooper Thieves in Time has a PlayStation 3 version also, so if you want that one instead, I wouldn't blame you, but it absolutely works great on the Vita as a pick-up-and-play action stealth platformer that stays true to the previous games in the series while also doing enough of its own thing to more than warrant a purchase for anyone. Given that Sucker Punch has long since moved on to more serious action-adventure games like Ghost of Tsushima, we're unlikely to see a canon Sly Cooper game again anytime soon. So, if you are a fan of the series and for some odd reason haven't played this one, now's the time to pony up and get a copy. 9. Wipeout 2048 Wipeout 2048 is also available on the PS4 in the Wipeout Omega collection, and in terms of technical performance, that is definitely the superior version. But I still feel like it's worth waiving my rule and getting a mention on this list because it's such an excellent Wipeout game, and if you are an old-school PlayStation fan like myself, then you know that no PlayStation platform will ever feel complete without at least one Wipeout game. The tracks are a little bit friendlier than previous games given that it's on a handheld, so you might notice the challenge isn't quite what it was on the PlayStation 1 or 2, but that doesn't really stop it from being a fun game. In fact, it probably makes it a better game in some respects. As with any good Wipeout game, this one has a lot of variety with its tracks, ships, and soundtrack, all of which I think you will find to be to your liking if you're a fan of the series. 10. Soul Sacrifice Kind of like Freedom Wars, Soul Sacrifice was a bit of a Monster Hunter derivative that was given the unrealistic responsibility of holding the entire platform on its shoulders by many in the media as well as Sony themselves, as the game was advertised quite a bit more than many other games on the platform. And Sony wasn't wrong for pushing the game, it's definitely a good time. While its basic gameplay loop can definitely be comparable to many other games in its genre, its gothic horror aesthetic and mysterious world go a long way to making it feel like its own thing, and you'll soon forget that it's heavily inspired by games that you've probably played many times before. Soul Sacrifice was greatly focused on its co-op mechanics, allowing players to sacrifice each other for bonus experience points if necessary, which was an interesting twist but felt a bit moot, as the Vita wasn't nearly popular enough to sustain that particular mechanic long term. Still, what you have here is a unique experience that stands up well to the standards of today, both in terms of presentation and gameplay. An expanded version of the game called Soul Sacrifice Delta was also released later on in the Vita's lifespan, but either version is highly recommended. The Vita being a fairly niche system ever since it launched, the physical copies of its games are already going up in price beyond what their digital counterparts cost. So regardless of what format you prefer, I'd say now is the time to grab everything you want before those collectible physical copies get even more highly sought after. 11. Tearaway No Vita library is complete without Tearaway. It's not only a standout platformer in its own right, but also probably the pinnacle of games that really use all the Vita's features. The back touchpad, cameras, and every other sensor the Vita has is utilized to great effect in Tearaway that actually makes them feel needed and not gimmicky, which is something very few games were able to do. And Tearaway does it arguably the best. There is a PS4 version of the game, and that's great too, but the Vita is truly the ideal way to experience this game. 12. Velocity 2X While the old-school style shoot-'em-up game might not be everybody's cup of tea these days, for those who do enjoy it, Velocity 2X is a must. Controlling Kai is tight and responsive. Dashing around the levels with Kai's short-range teleportation power is a blast from beginning to end and the addition of side-scrolling sections is more than enough to give Velocity its own special spot in the genre. 13. Spelunky What can be said about Spelunky that hasn't already been said a thousand times? 
It's just one of the best platformers out there, especially if you're into the roguelite variety. If difficulty isn't your thing, I would still say give it a shot, as Spelunky has a way of staying fun despite how terrible you might be at it. 14. Little Big Planet PS Vita Little Big Planet didn't grow to be one of PlayStation's most recognizable franchises for no reason. The games are lighthearted, fun to play, and offer tons of extra content and replayability. And there should always be room in your library for it. The Vita's LBP game has a lot of the things that you would expect, sewn into every stitch, and it should not be missed. 15. Code Realize Guardian of Rebirth a genre that has been growing over the past decade or so and owes a lot to the Vita is the visual novel genre. Before the Vita came around, it was much harder to find games of this sort on consoles, let alone localized ones. Thanks to the Vita popularizing the genre, they can now be found on basically everything, and Code Realize Guardian of Rebirth is one of the better titles. Idea Factory really knocked it out of the park with this one, that has a lot of great characters and a story that exudes a wide range of emotional tones and interesting narrative developments. 16. Gravity Rush If there was a vote on who should be the Vita's designated mascot character, Cat from Gravity Rush would probably be my first choice. Gravity Rush is one of the Vita's most unique and outstanding titles for a variety of reasons, but it's the manipulation of gravity that really hooks you in at first. Which is a fun mechanic that gives way to several new ways of playing this sort of game, but it also has a pretty cool story and presentation to boot. A technically superior version is on the PS4, but like Tearaway, I still feel like the Vita version is worth having and giving a real playthrough. That's all for now. If you enjoy what you saw, please hit the like button. And if you're new to the channel, now is a great time to subscribe. We upload brand new videos every single day. After subscribing, don't forget to enable all notifications by clicking the bell icon. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you next time, right here on Gaming Bolt.